guess what? They've changed again. Hi there, I'm Alex from Alex on the Map, and today we're gonna go over the Glacier National Park Reservation System. This is something I actually know pretty well, considering I grew up right by Glacier. When I was a kid, we didn't have reservation systems. You just went in and enjoyed the park and came home. But because more and more people have been coming to visit, it makes sense that we do have a new reservation system. A lot of other parks have been adopting them too, so the more people who decide to get outdoors, the more we kind of have to regulate who comes in. That being said, we do want to make sure that you are able to get your reservations when you want them for your trip because it really sucks to end up in that area and not be able to see the main reason why you came. We're going to go over the basics, such as how the reservation system works, why we have it, and then I'm going to go over each reservation system and which area it takes place, how to get around those reservations, and follow up with any FAQs you might have about the reservation system. Of course, if you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments, and you're going to want to subscribe and hit the bell notification for more updates on Glacier and other national parks. Finally, I also want to let you know that I have a free reservation system guide in the description that you can download. It covers all the national parks that require reservations in 2024 and gives you information about when they are, what they are, and how to get them. So a little bit of history about the reservation system at Glacier. Over the past two years, Glacier has experienced just so much more tourism than it normally gets. Part of it is I think it was from COVID where everyone just realized they wanted to get outside. Another reason might be because the glaciers are melting in Glacier National Park and everyone wants to get their last peek at it. Um, whatever the reason, more and more people are visiting the park. We had almost 3 million people in 2022. That's insane for a park that's really not designed for that many tourists. This year with the reservation system, there have been a few changes. One is that you do not need a reservation to get in from the east side at St. Mary along going to the Sun Road. This is a big change because before you would have to kind of navigate how you were going to get the reservation for that and then also the west side as well, but this year you don't need to worry about it. You only need a reservation ticket for going to the sun on the west side of the park. I'll dive into that a little bit more later because it can be very confusing. Another change that has happened is that ticket for going to the sun road is only for one day instead of three. Now this could make things a little bit more difficult when planning your trip because before you could block out that certain period of time and know you could get into the park for three days. Now it's only just one. So you have to be really on top of when you get your reservations and for which days. And finally, last year, Two Medicine had a reservation system. They do not this year, though they said they may bring it back depending on how much visitation is going on. But for right now, if you are planning on visiting to Medicine, you do not need a reservation for the summer. We got into a little bit why there's a reservation system, but this makes people really angry and understandably so because there is an element of gatekeeping the outdoors. Uh, if you are unaware of this reservation system going in, then you are not able to visit the national park, which is built for the public, which is built for all of us. So there's definitely an aspect there that I can see why people would be angry. On the other hand, the reservation system isn't just for keeping people out, it's also for keeping things conserved um, in order to keep our natural spaces the way they should be for future generations. So there's a balance that the national park system has to navigate and that can be quite difficult considering the fact that there are so many people who want to visit and the park has so few resources to begin with. I'm just going to quote the Glacier National Park superintendent on this real quick so you can get a general idea of why we have a reservation system now. So from the Glacier National Park website, our balanced approach for the 2024 pilot reflects feedback from the local tribes, the public partners and stakeholders, particularly addressing access to Apgar Village area and to medicine. We also heard that knowing that what park operations and access will look like sooner rather than later is important. And that's something to share as well. They released all this information a lot sooner than they normally did. So that does make it a little easier for us all to plan. All right, now I'm gonna talk a little bit how to get those reservations real quick. 
you're going to want to be very active on recreation.gov. That is the website that the park system has basically farmed out to a private company called Booz Allen Hamilton uh, to negotiate all the national park reservation systems. And there's like a whole thing with Booz Allen Hamilton. I'm not gonna go into it on this video, but it makes me very angry. Do your research, um, it's worth knowing about if you are a National Park fan. But back to reservations. So what you need to do is create a recreation.gov account before you even think about going ahead and getting your reservation tickets. This just makes the checkout process so much easier than if you have your tickets in your cart and you're unable to get them right away because you have to create an account and your password and then maybe forget your password. Just create the account beforehand and then when you are ready to go get your tickets, you're all logged in and ready to go. Glacier has a new way of getting your tickets before it was released in blocks. So if you were going to go in June, you would want to get your tickets in April. This is not the case anymore. It is now released on a 120 day rolling period. So if you are planning on visiting in May, let me do the other work. Two hours later. If you are planning on visiting May 31st of 2024, you're going to want to be able to get your ticket on February 1st, 2024. Yes, this is a lot of planning beforehand, especially if you don't know when you are planning on going to Glacier. It's just the way that they decided to do it this year. Um, there are some ways around this though, so sit tight and I will give you some more information on that in a little bit. Once you have your tickets in your cart and which areas you're going to do, then you're going to pay a $2 fee for each of those reservations. I also recommend printing out your confirmation that you have these tickets to show at the checkpoints that they have for the reservation system because sometimes the Wi-Fi or the service in Glacier is not so great. So this way you know for certain that you're going to get into the park. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the different types of reservation systems that they have in Glacier this year now that you know how to get your tickets heading to recreation.gov. The main ticket, of course, is the going to the Sun Road ticket. This is kind of the main artery that runs through the park. It provides you with those stunning views that you see um, driving up that road. If you wanna to head to Logan Pass for some of the best hikes in Glacier National Park, you will need this reservation as well. This is new this year. Any point past Apgar Village as well, you will need the ticket. Apgar was also part of this ticket last year, but not this year. You can enjoy Apgar and all the facilities there without having a reservation, so keep that in mind. These tickets have already gone on sale January 25th, so again, knowing your dates is really important because you're going to look 120 days into the future and grab your ticket for that day. Another thing you might want to know is that any tours or campgrounds or accommodations you have booked on going to the Sun Road past that point counts as your reservation ticket for that day. So if you are staying at Lake McDonald Lodge, if you are camping at the uh, Avalanche Lake Campground, then you are okay. You do not need reservations. So those serve as your reservation ticket. Again, recommend printing those out so you can show at that checkpoint. The dates that you will need this reservation for are May 24th through September 8th. I recommend going a little bit after because park facilities will still be open for about another week and plus you aren't dealing with the crowds and then you don't need reservations. Fall is also my favorite time to visit. I have a video about that. So if you wanna check it that out and plan around that, that might be a good way to go. Many Glacier reservations are pretty similar to what they were last year. You're going to need them from July 1st until September 8th and they also are only available for one day, just like going to the Sun Road. Same, you're going to book them 120 days before you plan on entering the park. So again, having that itinerary plans can really make a big difference when you say, hey, I'm going to check out going to the Sun Road this day, I'm gonna check out Mini Glacier this day, and maybe the North Fork this day. And also same, if you have any lodging, tours, 
um, a boat tour on Swift Current Lake, uh, a backpacking tour with glacier guides, then you're going to be just fine. You do not need reservations for this area. The North Fork is also pretty similar. You're going to need those reservations from May 24th to September 8th, same as going to the Sun Road, 120 days, and they allow entry for one day. So that one's pretty self-explanatory. There are very few facilities in the North Fork, only some campsites, but those will serve as your reservation tickets as well. So in summary, one day for all areas of the park, Previously it was three for going to the sun, but now it's just one. Any accommodations, tours booked in that area, you're set. And finally, I think the most important thing to mention is how to avoid this, all this in general, is to enter before the hours of 6 a.m and after the hours of 3 p.m. You'd be surprised, you can still see a lot actually in the afternoon when you start at three because it stays light for so long that time of year. And honestly, if you're a hiker, I recommend getting up before six to the park anyway because if you are planning on taking any of your hikes from Logan Pass, it's gonna be jam packed. And I also have a video about Logan and how to navigate that parking situation too that you might wanna check out. Okay, so I'm gonna go over some quick FAQs. Again, you might have your own, so feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you right away and answer them. So number one is which areas require reservations? And we just went over it, but let's go over it again. Glacier requires reservations from going to the Sun Road on the west side, Many Glacier and the North Fork. No to medicine this year, just those. Another question is when should I purchase my reservations for Glacier? And the answer is if you want to go in advance, 120 days, 120 days for all types of reservations. If you're willing to say, hey, I can wait until the day before, I am flexible, I'm open, especially if you're a local, then I would recommend maybe looking at 8 a.m. the previous day you plan on visiting, so the day before you plan on entering the park. Tickets go on sale at 8 a.m. MT at recreation.gov, and there are a limited number available for each area of the park. So worst case scenario, at the end of the day, if you can't get your tickets 120 days in advance, there still might be an opportunity to go into the park that day. You're just gonna to need to go onto recreation.gov at 8 a.m. the day before to see if you can get your tickets. One thing I like to do is set a calendar alert on my phone if I know I'm gonna be entering the park on certain days because then that way 120 days before I get this little pop-up that says pay attention and then I can just go ahead and do it right away. Okay, another thing I often get asked is can you get into Glacier without reservations? And I gave some previous tips about entering the park before 6 a.m. and enjoying the park after 3 p.m. So that's really the easiest way to do it is just to plan on being really, really early or spending the late afternoon there, knowing that maybe you won't get a full day, but you'll at least get a partial day. Another way you can go is just by driving all the way around if you're on the west side and entering in at St. Mary because no reservations are required from that point. It is a bit of a drive if you're staying in Kalispell and Whitefish and you're heading all the way around, but you can enter the park that way if need be. Another way, as we mentioned too, is accommodations, tours, um, campsites, those all allow you access without a reservation ticket. So you might want to go ahead and book a tour and I highly recommend some of these tours that are available because not only do you learn a lot about the park by taking them, but they're also fun and you don't need a reservation ticket. Okay, how long does each reservation last? We chatted a little bit about this. For all reservations this year, it is one day. One day and one day only. Can you drive through Glacier National Park without reservations? Again, as discussed, head over to the east side, enter in at St. Mary, and then you can head along going to the sun back to the west side. Another question I often get is, do I need a park pass on top of the reservation? And the answer is yes, you will need a park pass in conjunction with your reservation ticket. There are several different options available. If you are planning on being in Glacier for about seven days, then there's a $35 charge uh, that you can make at any of the entrances. 
Um, you can also purchase an annual Glacier Pass for $70. And I recommend to all my clients, if they are planning on visiting, say three national parks a year to invest in the annual national park pass because it is $80 and it's gonna save you a lot of money if you visit three national parks. So good to go. Gosh. Can you take the shuttle without needing reservations? And I love this because this changed from last year. Yes, you can. You do not need to have a reservation in order to enjoy the whole part of the park. That's the best part about these changes this year is you can access the shuttle from the Apgar Transit Center on the west side and from St. Mary on the east side. And then you don't need to worry about driving. This is my mode of transportation for this year getting on the shuttle, having them drive, going to the Sun Road, and taking me wherever I need to go. It's completely free. You do need a parks pass, but it's just way better. And honestly, I kind of enjoy having someone else drive the road instead of me being focused on driving the road and not seeing the beautiful scenery around me. So I highly recommend the shuttle. We talked a little bit about what will happen if you cannot get those reservations, but here's the thing. Again, you can enter before that 6 a.m. period and after that 3 p.m. period. That gives you plenty of time to explore the park and you're going to have a great time. So don't feel as though if you can't get your reservations that it's not worth coming. You just might have to get up a little earlier or plan for a little bit later. And again, as mentioned, go ahead, book a tour. Um, consider maybe checking the website of the Lake McDonald Lodge or the Many Glacier Hotel pretty often and you never know. Something might come up and then you are set. You are all ready for that day. One thing I do want to mention too because some people ask if I book a tour does that exempt me from the reservations and that is true. It does. One thing I do want to mention though is that it really depends on that area. So you can book a boat tour for Lake McDonald, but that is not going to give you free access to Many Glacier. So that depends on where you're booking the tour and which area because the tour has to be in that certain area. If you want a list of fully commercially approved uh, tour companies from the park, I have them in that blog post down below so you can check those out and book through there. I've also been asked if reservations allow you a parking space or guarantee you a parking spot. And unfortunately they do not. And even if you have those reservation tickets, there's a very small chance you're gonna get parking at Logan Pass at around 11 o'clock. It's just probably not gonna happen because that area gets so crowded. So this is another reason why I consider getting in before six if you are planning on going to Logan. It just makes the whole process easier. It just, it just, Get up early that one day you want to go to Logan. If you are having a special event, say a wedding or um, I don't know, like a photo shoot or something like that, you do not need a reservation. Those serve as your reservation tickets. Um, you'll want to go to the Glacier National Park website where they have more information on that because they'll be able to help you determine, all right, I need this specific permit for this specific thing. Um, also the cost for that change depending. Point being though, you do not need a reservation, <laughs> you're set. I hope this has been helpful for you and has not made things more confusing because it definitely can be confusing. So don't feel bad if this is a little bit overwhelming. It's overwhelming for all of us, even for me. Having grown up there, it changes year to year. So I almost have to relearn the entire reservation system over and over and over again. But please let me know if you have any questions, happy to answer them. And if you're interested, I do offer trip planning for this purpose, almost specifically. So you can check out my custom national park itineraries in the description below. And I'm happy to go over your trip in a free 15 minute call. And I look forward to chatting with you then.